Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. This equation is actually nice in so many ways. We're going to talk about a cortic, how we can solve a cortic in general. And thank you Nadia fan, is that how you say it, uh, for the idea. Anyway, so I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So we have something squared. So let's go ahead and expand it x to the fourth minus 12 x squared plus 36 equals x plus 6. Of course, the first method is kind of more brute forcey. We're just going to turn this into a full cortic. Actually, this is not a full cortic, by the way. It's just missing x cubed, which is good. And then we're going to solve it. Okay. And there's actually more than one way to solve it with the first method, uh, but I'm just going to talk about one. The other method is just going to be try to factor this into two quadratics. Okay. So let's go ahead and put everything besides x to the fourth on the right hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate x to the fourth and write this as 12x squared plus x minus 30. Great. So far so good, right? The fourth power equals a quadratic. What is that supposed to mean? Not much. But we're going to turn this into something meaningful. Again, thank you for the idea, Nadia. So we're going to add something to both sides to make the left hand side a perfect square which should also make the right-hand side a perfect square. And th those terms, since I have x to the fourth, I kind of want to turn this into x squared plus k, k being a constant, to the second power. Now, why don't I use x squared plus kx plus m, or just x squared plus kx, something like that, because I don't want to introduce x cubed to the equation, because I already got rid of it, or it's been already that way, and I don't want to introduce it. So this is equal to x to the fourth plus 2kx squared, plus k squared. So the terms that I need to add are these two things. So let's go ahead and add those two terms to both sides and see what happens. Something magical or mathematical is going to happen. x to the fourth plus, I'm going to be adding 2kx squared plus k squared, right? And then on the other side, I have 12x squared plus x minus 30 and I'm going to be adding the same thing to kx squared plus k squared. Notice that we're adding the same thing to both sides, so it's not going to matter, right? Well, it is. Yes and no. Now, the left-hand side becomes a perfect square, and that's perfect. Let's write it as x squared plus k squared. That was our goal. And the right-hand side can be arranged a little bit. Like, I can write this as 12 plus 2k x squared plus x plus k squared minus 30. Awesome. The left-hand side is a perfect square. And if the right-hand side can also be turned into a perfect square, then everything will be perfect. Everything will be awesome. And now we can use difference of two squares or just square roots and absolute value to solve this problem. Make sense? So in order for the right-hand side to be a perfect square, because this is a quadratic, a quadratic is a perfect square if it has double roots or x sub 1 equals x sub 2 or if it's tangent to the x-axis, or if the discriminant is 0. b squared minus 4ac, remember that? So we want discriminant to be 0 or delta, and delta actually here is given by b squared minus 4 times a times c. Great. And we want this to be 0. To keep a long story short, this is going to give you a cubic equation, right? You want this to be 0, and the cubic you're going to get from here is actually really cool. So that cubic is going to be 8k cubed after you distribute and rearrange everything that I've done it for you. Without further ado, we're going to get this expression right here, which is kind of like scary because when I look at this cortic, I mean cubic, I'm like, I don't think there are any rational roots, but I was wrong, of course. If you check, there are so many possibilities. I'm not exactly sure how you can factor 1,441. Maybe you can tell me about it, but we realize, or Wolfram Alpha helps us realize that k equals negative 11 over 2 works. Great. The other solutions, I believe, are complex, so we don't have to worry about them. And now this is going to help us factor and solve the equation. Now, k equals negative 11 half, what does that mean? That means we're going to plug it in here and here, in two places. Let's see. If k is equal to negative 11 halves, so we're going to get x squared minus 11 halves squared on the left. And on the right-hand side, let's evaluate it. 
what is 12 plus 2k? k is negative 11 halves, double k, you're gonna get negative 11, 12 minus 11 is one, oh awesome, I get x squared, super duper nice, and then plus x, that doesn't have any coefficient, and the constant term is k squared, oh come on, what is k squared? k squared is 121 over four, if you subtract 30 from it, which is 120 over four, that was easy, right? One fourth, awesome. This is super duper nice because, wait a minute, is this a perfect square? Yes, it is, of course. Why? Because it is, it, it's supposed to be, it has to be. We solve for k such that it becomes a perfect square. So definitely right-hand side if you didn't make any mistakes, or if I didn't make any mistakes, hopefully didn't, and that should be a perfect square. And guess what? That is actually a really nice expression because it is x plus one-half squared. Isn't this awesome? Now, how do you solve this from this point on? Fairly easy. You're just going to go with the plus minus square root both sides. X squared minus 11 halves is either X plus 1 half or X squared minus 11 halves is the opposite of that, which is negative X minus 1 half. From here, you're going to get quadratic equations. And by solving each one, you're going to get the answer. Okay? Make sense? Okay. Since we're going to solve the same quadratics, we're going to be doing this with the second method, if you allow me to do it. So forgive me for not going over this, but this is easy. You can do it. First, multiply both sides by two, and then simplify. You're going to get even numbers. Everything will be evened out. Make sense? Okay. So the second method is actually really cool. I really like it. And of course, this problem has been designed that way. So yes, I know. And not all numbers are nice, but we got a K value, which is sort of nice, semi-nice maybe. So here's how it works. X is squared, and then we subtract six from it, and it's squared again. Why not do the same thing? Keep doing it. Square the x, subtract 6, square the thing, and subtract 6. So here's what I'm going to do. I hope that made sense. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. And then use my superpowers, which is called substitution, and I'm going to call this y, and please don't question y. y equals x squared minus 6, but also x equals y squared minus 6. Do you see what I see? Hopefully. And then from here, we get two equations. We get a system from a single equation. Why would you do that? Are you crazy? No. This makes it easier to solve. Let's go ahead and subtract these equations. Uh, y minus x. 6 is going to cancel out. I mean negative 6. x squared minus y squared can be factored as x plus y, x minus y. If you subtract it, x minus y will be negated and become y minus x. That's so convenient. And then it'll be multiplied by x plus y and equals 0. Awesome. Now we can... Go ahead and take out y minus x, and we get 1 plus x plus y equals 0. Awesome. Now, from here, we get two results, y equals x or 1 plus x plus y equals 0. I wrote it that way because I want everything on the same side. I don't want to redo the work. I'm lazy, okay? Fine. Now, what do you do with this? y equals x. What is y? y is x squared minus x. Remember, that's something we invented, right? That's kind of like a dummy thing. But anyways x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0, x minus 3, x plus 2 equals 0, awesome, x equals 3 or negative 2, beautiful. Now, so those are the two solutions. Remember, this is a quartic equation, so we should have four solutions. Now, 1 plus x plus y, y is x squared minus 6, you can just copy from there, and this gives us x squared plus x minus 5 equals 0, this is a quadratic, use the formula, Negative, there's a reason why there's a formula, right? Negative 1 plus minus 2 squared of 21 over 2. And those are going to be the other two solutions. Yay! They're all real. Okay, great. We've done, we're done with the second method. Now is the time to take a look at the graph. Surprise! Okay, we have a quartic equation, which I didn't show you the whole thing because that wouldn't fit. I didn't want to zoom out so much. And as you can see, this is a linear function. And it intersects our quartic at four different points. And those points are given as follows. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.